merge the two and align what is good for all of us in that regard. At the same time, our aim is to advance restorative practices so these students can return to class and do what young people are really meant to be doing. Growing, learning, and developing a sense of this world and where they fit in and how they can have lives that contribute and make them feel good about being alive. At present, restorative practices are practically non-existent in New Haven, and we have to do better in this regard. I want to take a minute to acknowledge the American Federation of Teachers, which has taken a lead role in the development of restorative practices, and at the same time congratulate the New Haven AFT, which has earned a $300,000 grant to help underwrite these efforts. These are new, believe it or not, and cutting edge. And why don't we just take a moment to thank our teachers for wanting to get involved. Let's thank them. I would like to see us go forward in three areas that we really need to advance as we think about restorative practices. First, we want to prevent suspensions from happening. First, we want to prevent suspensions from happening. And we want to prevent it through early intervention, keeping students active and engaged. Preventing suspensions also includes delivering services for students with special needs, but we've got to broaden what we think those special needs are. We've got to look at the special academic needs that children have, as well as the special social needs. And we've got to help those who've experienced traumatic life events. And I know they're doing a lot of that work here in this school, and that it really is important. I think that we're just beginning to see how trauma impacts how a child relates to his or her environment. And uh, especially when we think about the preponderance of domestic violence in our community and in our state, uh, and think about how we really don't talk about it, and that children often witness it, they have to come to school without really anyone verifying for them that what they've seen has been traumatic and has impacted their lives in a real and meaningful way. Uh, we ask people to be very quiet about those things and they, they, they have an impact on kids when they come to school and sometimes that's what spurs them acting up. If and when we can't prevent a student from getting into trouble, we want to try to reduce the reliance on suspensions and expulsions. A large part of this is insisting upon accountability and standards in each school. Beyond that, we want schools to consider alternative strategies. And we want to ensure no traumatic life experience is exerting undue influence on a student's behavior. And finally, if and when a student is suspended or expelled as a last resort, we must restructure homebound supervision and insist that time away from school be worthwhile and intensive and long enough to make a difference, a positive and productive difference in that child's life. 